As the designated tech support nerd in my family, I would love to offload some of the troubleshooting to an AI like ChatGPT. But considering it isn't exactly full of critical thinking skills, how good could it even be at giving tech support? Well, I put it to the test. Let's start off with some really easy questions. The sort of question your older parent might ask you, like, how do you connect a Bluetooth speaker or headphones on Android? Well, it says to turn the speaker on, put it in pairing mode, which it adds is often by holding down the power button until it flashes, or by pressing a dedicated pairing button, like on these headphones. The dedicated button is here, and then you turn on Bluetooth on your phone, and make sure that it's really on, they really specify that. Then it says that your device will start scanning immediately, you tap on the right option, and pair. You might need a passcode apparently, not something that I've seen on a Bluetooth audio connection this decade, but then you should be good to go. On iOS, it's pretty much the same setup, including both turning Bluetooth on and making sure that it is, in fact, on. After that, you just wait for it to detect your device, tap it, and then it's paired and ready to go. Okay, so we got that right, but what about another easy problem, like scanning a QR code? There's plenty of restaurants that make you view the menu or even pay via QR code now, so it's important for you to know how to use them. On iOS, ChatGPT says that you have two options. You can open the main camera app and just point it at the QR code until a pop-up shows up, or if you have iOS 12 or later, you can swipe up from the bottom to display the control sensor and use the QR code scanner. This is all right, although it's notable that the control center is a customizable interface and you might not have the QR code scanner uh, option there, you might need to go and add it. So the main camera one, which is the first thing it suggests, is probably the better choice. For Android, it's a little more complicated. My OnePlus 7C Pro's default camera app doesn't support scanning QR codes by default. Now, just asking ChatGPT how to do it on Android nets you a mostly helpful response. It says use the camera app or download a third-party app like QR Code Reader or Barcode Scanner, the latter of which has actually been my personal choice for uh, what I've realized is about a decade now. The built-in camera app can scan QR codes though if you click the Google Lens button. I tried to see if ChatGPT knew to press that button, but my attempts to get it to tell me to do it weren't exactly helpful. It said that I should check the camera is working, check that the QR code has enough light on it to scan it, or that the code just might be invalid altogether. It's not wrong with any of those suggestions, it's just not what I was looking for. When I asked it again though, this time telling it my exact phone model, it then told me to update my version of Oxygen OS, as in the actual operating system I use, or to use Google Lens, finally. So for the basic stuff, it's clearly a decent fit. You would need to be specific to get the best results, but it is pretty good at articulating what you need to do. But what about something a little more advanced? What if you've just built yourself a new gaming PC and it won't boot? You've got two error codes from your motherboard's little debug display, so you ask ChatGPT for help. Now, I actually had this problem last week, and without any outside assistance, I fixed it in like two minutes. So I am a little too experienced to be asking the questions here, but I gave it a shot anyway. I asked what motherboard code 21 means. It said that I should reseat the CPU, check the VRMs somehow, use a multimeter to check the power supplies outputting the quote, correct voltage, and remove the CMOS battery. So it, it told me to do the most delicate thing you can do with your system, reseat the CPU, which requires you to have more thermal paste on hand to replace what you will need to wipe off. And then it told me to most likely destroy my system by poking a multimeter at the power supply. That is terrible advice. Now, I wasn't exactly happy with that advice, so I then told it about the other error code, AA. And again, it told me to use a multimeter on the power supply, then reseat the RAM and GPU. 
Now the issue was that the ram wasn't fully seated, but if, uh, if I had followed its instructions to the letter, I would have taken an hour to not only to basically not find the problem. I also had to know that the ram was the problem already, which somewhat defeats the purpose of my questioning, so I enlisted the help of my amazing wife to basically be the, the layman interface for me. She asked it for help with her computer. It asked what's wrong, she said it won't turn on and there's an error code on the motherboard. It asked what the error codes were and what motherboard. She said what motherboard model, an Azurock X670E Carrara, and it gave her a admittedly broken but remarkably close to accurate link to the manual and asked her what error codes there were. She said AA and 21. It again said to check the CPU and then the RAM and then take all but one stick of RAM out and try again or remove the, the CMOS or the BIOS battery. It picked a much more basic tone than it did for me, explaining things clearly and with more care in its wording. Now, a quirk of that ASRock board is that even when you do reseat the RAM, it won't actually boot until you power cycle it at the wall. It needs to be shut off fully, then you can turn the power supply back on, and then it will boot. She asked it what to do now that she fixed the RAM, but nothing changed, and after another poke, it then gave her the proper instructions to reset your BIOS, which includes disconnecting it from the power source. It stumbled into the correct answer here, but a correct answer nonetheless. I thought I would also throw out a bit of a curveball with an issue that I had with my system last year. My memory on what exact symptoms I had are a little hazy, but I remembered enough to ask ChatGPT the question. The issue I had took me months to diagnose. It was an eclectic list of symptoms that kept pointing in countless different directions. I had issues with Premiere Pro, although <laughs> when don't I? I had my 10 gig network card randomly drop out, although normally reconnecting the ethernet cable would fix it, and then my GPU started to break too. Sometimes in games I would just get black screens or blue screen errors. In Premiere Pro it would just drop out, it would crash a whole lot, or it would kick the network card out when I was editing. Then my PCI Gen 4 media cache drive that I was using for Premiere Pro started throwing errors. Read-only folders randomly, it would just drop out and disconnect and I need to restart the system to get it to come back. Just the absolute works. I swapped my media cache to my prized Sabrent Rocket 4Q drive, or 4 terabytes uh, drive, which only moved the errors to there instead. Eventually, I worked out that the network card was basically wrecking everything on my PCIe bus, and when I replaced that card with something much more stable, most of the errors went away. Sadly, it does seem to have permanently damaged my RTX 2080 Ti and potentially a Ryzen 3900X and the 4TB Sabrent Rocket Q as well. So, doing my best to play dumb, I asked ChatGPT what it thinks could be wrong. Likely thanks to my wording here, kind of leading it in one direction, it suggested that I check the Windows Event Viewer, which is a great idea, and test the hardware. Also check my drivers and test my power supply, although this time using an actual power supply tester rather than a multimeter. I thought I would see how much my wording could sway its responses, so I asked it if it could be a software issue. Unsurprisingly, ChatGPT has the spine of a jellyfish, and so it swung to update my drivers, again, disable hardware acceleration, update Premiere Pro, and check things like the network settings, and run malware scans. Now, all of those aren't actually bad advice, and I think I went through all of those on my own anyway, but uh, since I'd already considered all of them, I added that, uh, added that my graphics card was also having issues outside of Premiere Pro. It then suggested that I should check my graphics card, the drivers again, uh, temperatures and power supply again, then if none of those helped, I should just take it to a professional. I confirmed Again, that yes, my drivers were up to date, and that the event viewer was really only seeing errors for the 10 gig NIC. This time it is said to try another NIC, because the one I have might be faulty. 
This is the correct answer, but again, it really stumbled into it. I feel like I led it there just by what I told it, rather than it sort of actually telling me what the answer should be. But if I was asking these questions uh, a year ago when I was actually trying to diagnose everything, I could easily see the case where I accidentally lead it astray because I don't know what to do. It didn't come to the conclusion that it was my nick that was the thing breaking everything else, it just said, maybe check that. I feel very much like ChatGPT is a rubber duck debugger. It's a great way to air out your thoughts, to talk through a problem, and maybe it comes up with something that you haven't thought of yet, or just by talking it out and explaining everything, you come up with the answer yourself. For basic stuff, for the sort of stuff that you could just easily Google, it does give you the right answer pretty easily. But for something that requires actual thoughts, you know, critical thinking skills, it isn't the best for that. It never comes to a conclusion. It just offers somewhat helpful, somewhat dangerous advice. It seems like the more specific you can be, the more helpful it is. If you ask it a really specific question, you are likely to get a pretty useful answer, although you do have to be careful on your wording. What you input makes a huge difference to how it responds, and it can easily be led one way or another, rather than, say, someone with actual experience on the topic who's going to be more firm and actually make their own sort of deductions. So, is ChatGPT going to be the tool that we can offload all our tech support duties onto? Well, probably not. For the basic stuff, uh, a Google search is all you really need to do, and most family members would rather pester you than search it themselves, so getting them to sign up to ChatGPT and ask it uh, seems like a tall order. For the more technically challenging stuff, it might be helpful, except if you have the knowledge to ask it the right questions, chances are you already have enough knowledge to solve the problem yourself anyway. I know for programming problems it can be incredibly helpful, so it might just be the problems that I was asking it here, and seeing as at least for now it's free for you to sign up and use, it can't hurt to, to go and give it a try yourself the next time you are stuck with something. But with that said, those are my thoughts and experiences with it, I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. Have you used ChatGPT to help you out with a sticky problem? If you have, how did it go for you? If not, would you consider doing it? Let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, that's kind of it for this video. If you want to see more videos possibly like this, possibly more just normal tech reviews, hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. Check out plenty of other videos on the end cards. And that's kind of it. If you want to support the channel, you can do so through YouTube, Patreon, pick up a hoodie or t-shirt like this one, or a load of other designs I made myself. Pick up a open source response time tool at osrtt.com if you fancy, or check out some of the affiliate links that are in the description that don't cost you anything to use, but massively help me out when you do use them. Otherwise, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, we'll see you on the next video.